Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and in this video, we'll be going through everything you need to know about the second FRQ on the APES 2021 exam, which will be calculation-based. If you're ready to think like a mountain and write like a scholar, let's get started. First, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and then turn on notifications so you don't miss video number three in this series, which will cover the FRQ that's based on solving an environmental problem. Video number one covered the FRQ that was based on experimental design, and I'll also be coming out with a must-know topics video before the first exam on May 14th. The other thing you should do is go down to the comments section and leave a comment with where you're studying from and which exam you're taking. One of my favorite parts of exam prepping with APE students last year was just the sense of community that evolved in the comment section. It was really supportive and it was a lot of fun to see where you guys were studying from. So if you can leave a comment down there, let's try to get that positive energy going again for the APES 2021 exam. Another thing to check out down in the video description is the link tree, which is gonna have a ton of APES resources that'll help you get ready for this exam. Make sure to follow the APES TikTok account, APES versus everybody, the APES Instagram account, APES versus everybody, for lots more bite-sized review as we get closer to that first exam date, May 14th. So the first thing you need to know about the calculation-based FRQ in the APES 2021 exam is that about six out of the 10 points in this FRQ will be based on math. Now that breaks down to about six out of 30 of the total points or 20%. Since the FRQs are worth 40% of the total exam, this means that performing math calculations on the FRQ section is worth about 8% of the total exam. That's enough to make sure you go through this video and that you're comfortable doing these calculations, but not so much that you need to be super stressed out or think that you're going to bomb or fail the entire exam if you can't perform all of these math calculations perfectly. Based off the College Board's YouTube live stream reviews, it looks like this will take the form of about three questions, each worth two points. Now, these are the only FRQs that look like they'll be worth two points. One point will be awarded for the correct setup with units, and the second point will be awarded for the correct answer also with units. This brings us to our first tip for the math-based FRQ on the APES 2021 exam, which is you need to include your units. You have to include units in both the setup and the answer for the problem if you hope to earn either of the points. I can't stress that enough. Since the second and third exam dates will both be digital, all of these problems will be set up in a way that you can easily show your work in a typed format, since there will not be any option to upload pictures of handwritten work. So with that being said, we'll go forward in this video showing you how to lay out your work with a standard keyboard so that you don't have to write out anything by hand. However, if you're taking that first exam date, that will be paper-based, and so you will wanna be comfortable writing out your work by hand as well if you have that date. While it's impossible to predict exactly what type of math calculation you'll be asked to perform on the APES 2021 exam, the recent practice tests, as well as AP daily live videos and recent released exams, all indicate that there's a high likelihood that it will be one of three problem types. Those are percent change, unit conversion or dimensional analysis, as some of you may refer to it, and population growth rate. While it's totally possible that the exam does ask you to perform something more complex, like a half-life problem or a net primary productivity problem, we're gonna go forward in this video covering the three most likely outcomes on the APES 2021 math exam. But what I've done is linked in the description below a playlist from Christy Shirts that covers a ton of different problems in APES that are math related. So if you are already comfortable with these three types of calculations and you wanna cover all your bases and make sure you have those more obscure, more complex calculations down, I encourage you to go check out her playlist below. The first type of problem we'll take a look at today is percent change. A lot of times, APE students ask if they have to memorize any formulas for the exam. And the answer is yes, but they're pretty simple formulas. So you do need to memorize them in the sense that you will not be given a formula sheet or told how to perform these calculations. But luckily, they're very simple calculations to memorize. So for percent change, you just need to remember the simple formula. The new number minus the old number divided by the old number times 100. And times by 100 at the end is to move this into a percent per 100. The other thing I want to point out is that when you're putting this into your calculator, it's really important that you use parentheses or be clear that you complete each step separately. So you need to do, uh, subtract the new number minus the old number first and then divide by the old number and then multiply by 100. If you type all of that in with no parentheses, you run the risk of not following order of operations. So it's really important to write that out and indicate this when you're typing it out, especially if you're showing your work on exams number two or number three. 
So let's do 1% change calculation problem together, and then you can pause the video and try the next one on your own. So this first percent change calculation that we'll take a look at comes from the 2017 FRQ. What we have here is a data table that shows the estimated elephant population on the African continent over time. In part B of the FRQ, we're asked to calculate the percent loss of elephants in Africa from 1970 to 2000. Notice that this specifies show all your work in bold. So again, the College Board is telling you, in case you didn't watch this video or in case you forgot, show your work and include your units. So the first step here is to find the new number and the old number. Since we're calculating the percent change from 1970 to 2000, what we're going to do is take 2000 as our new number. And the population in 2000 is 400,000 elephants. So we're gonna subtract 400,000 elephants minus 2 million elephants because that's the population in 1970 or our old number. So when we set this up, we have 400,000 elephants minus 2 million elephants all over 2 million elephants. And what you might notice already is that this is going to produce a negative number at the end of this calculation, which is great because we know we're calculating the percent loss in elephants from the time period 1970 to 2000. So if we carry this problem out, what we'll find is that there was an 80% decline in elephants on the African continent from the time period 1970 to 2000. Now let's take a look at another percent change calculation that comes from the 2015 FRQ series. In this FRQ, we're asked to calculate the percent increase in mobile phone sales from 1998 to 2007. If we look at the background of the FRQ, we'll see that approximately 30 million devices were sold in 1998 in the United States, and that number sold increased to 180 million in 2007. So what I want you to do is pause the video now and see if you can work this problem out, and then unpause the video and see how you did. So hopefully you were able to set this up properly and perform the calculation to find that there was a 500% increase in mobile phones from 1998 to 2007. As a reminder, it's really important to carry the units all throughout the setup and the final answer. So if we walk through this quickly, we have new minus old all over old times 100. The new value would be 180 million phones since that's the number that was sold in 2007 with the old value being 30 million phones. So we essentially have 180 minus 30 all over 30 times 100. It's important that you should still write the million in here just to be safe and that you should also write that we're dealing with phones. Again, you just want to make sure that you're always including your units in both your setup and your answer. The next type of problem that we'll take a look at here is what I like to call a unit conversion problem or what you may know as a dimensional analysis problem. So this question comes to us from the APES CED, which is the course and exam description. Uh, it's right behind me here. It's something I look at every day. And so I think this is a great example of what the new math-based FRQ may look like, given that it comes straight from College Board itself. So in the background for this FRQ, we have this introduction here that an individual has decided to convert a grassy area on a property to a large garden in order to grow food, primarily vegetables. The garden measures 50 meters in length by 70 meters in width. In part C, they're asking you to find the number of kilograms of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer that should be spread on the garden area. In the background for this portion, they've let you know ahead of time that the gardener finds a synthetic fertilizer with 34% nitrogen and a recommended application rate of one kilogram of nitrogen per 70 square meters. So the first step here is to figure out what the area of this garden is. So we know the dimensions are 50 meters by seven meters. And so if we multiply 50 by 70, we get an area of 350 meters squared. It's really important that you use meters squared here because we've changed our units. When we're talking about an area, we have to use a square number here. We have to use meters squared since it was meters by meters. Remember that you need to include units throughout the setup. And so if you omitted square meters here, now, there's a good chance that you would lose the setup point of this calculation. So it's really critical that you include proper units. What we need to do next is multiply here by a conversion factor, or we need to set up a dimensional analysis problem. So since we know that 70 meters squared is the area that one kilogram of this fertilizer should cover, we can either multiply 350 square meters by one kilogram over 70 square meters, that would be using a conversion factor or setting up a dimensional analysis. But that's the same as the way that I like to think through it, which is 350 meters squared 
divided by 70 meters per kilogram. So no matter how you want to set it up, we need to divide 350 square meters by 70 square meters, and that's going to give us five kilograms of fertilizer. Now we'll take a look at another unit conversion or dimensional analysis problem from the 2019 FRQ. So in this FRQ, you're asked about the extraction of crude oil from Alberta, Canada, and we'll take a look at the background here now. So we'll take a look at the background of this FRQ here first. It says, as conventional sources of crude oil are depleted, unconventional sources such as oil sands are being utilized. Oil sands contain bitumen, which can be processed into a synthetic crude oil. A region of boreal forests in Alberta, Canada that covers a deposit of oil sands will be cut and removed during the process of bitumen extraction. It is estimated that the deposit currently contains 73 billion barrels of recoverable bitumen. The rate of extraction from the deposit will be approximately 1 million barrels of bitumen per day. In part D, we're asked, assuming the above extraction rate, calculate how many days will be needed to extract the recoverable volume of bitumen from the oil sands. So go ahead and pause the video now and see if you're able to properly set up this problem and then calculate the correct answer. All right, let's take a look at how you did on this practice unit conversion problem. So this is a relatively simple setup where we're really just dividing the total number of barrels, which is 73 billion, by the number of barrels that can be extracted per day, which is 1 million barrels. If you want to use dimensional analysis, you're technically multiplying 73 billion barrels by the conversion factor one day over 1 million barrels, but this is the same as the division problem that I first described here in this walkthrough. The good news is that as long as your answer setup is logical, includes units, and is able to be followed by a reader to arrive at your answer, you can really use any setup that you'd like. The only real trick here is remembering how many zeros are in a billion and a million, and then correctly entering those in your calculator. If you're more comfortable with scientific notation, and remember that one billion correlates to nine zeros, or 10 to the ninth, and a million refers to six zeros, or 10 to the sixth, that's a fine way to set this up as well. Again, either way works, so long as you're dividing 73 billion barrels by 1 million barrels per day, and you end up with a timeline of 73,000 days. Make sure to leave a comment below if you're able to work through this correctly, or if you ran into any issues or had a different way of setting this up. And the final type of problem I wanna make sure you're prepared for on this 2021 exam is calculating population growth rates and doubling times using the rule of 70. So it's important to remember that when you're calculating population growth rate for human populations, we're probably going to be working with CDR and CBR, which refers to crude death, crude death rate and crude birth rate. This is the number of deaths and births per 1,000 people. So when we set this up, what we're going to need to do is subtract CBR or crude birth rate minus CDR or crude death rate and divide that quantity by 10. The reason we're dividing by 10 is the fact that crude birth rates and crude death rates are expressed per 1,000 people, and we want an answer of percent growth rate, and percent refers to per 100. So if we take a look at an example country here, which would be Nigeria, Nigeria has a CBR of 37 and a CDR of 12. So if we plug these numbers into our equation, what we should see here is 37 minus 12 divided by 10. And if we carry that out, what we're going to find is that Nigeria has a population growth rate of 2.5. And what's neat is if we check the actual CIA World Backbook to see what is Nigeria's population growth rate, we'll see that their population growth rate in 2019 was 2.6. And that's just a touch off because I use nice rounded numbers as their CDR and their CBR. And so we can see here that this math calculation fits with what the actual growth rate is in the country of Nigeria. Now that we have population growth rate down, we're gonna take a look at one final type of question that you may be faced with on the FRQ, which is doubling time using the rule of 70. This often appears as a single multiple choice question on exams, so it's still not a bad idea to have it down, even if you don't face it on an FRQ. This is a really simple rule where you're just taking 70 divided by the growth rate, and that will give you the number of years it takes for a human population to double. So in this case, if we use Nigeria as an example, we're going to divide 70 by 2.5, which remember is their population growth rate, and that's gonna equal 28 years. So it will take roughly 28 years for the population of Nigeria to double based on this 2.5% growth rate that we calculated above. Now that we've covered the three types of problems that I think you're most likely to see on the calculation-based FRQ and the APES 2021 exam, I hope you're feeling a little bit more confident about math, 
about this FRQ, and I hope that you can earn all six of these points so you have a solid 8% of the exam already in the bag as you head out of the exam. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the third and final video in the series, which will cover the Propose a Solution-based FRQ. I hope that as you're heading into your final week of studying here, if you're taking the May 14th exam, you're feeling a little more confident, a little less stress, and I hope if you're taking the May 27th exam or the June 11th, you have some solid strategies to practice when it comes to the math FRQ here. As always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.